What's going on, y'all? It's your man Ricochet for Vibe 105. I am sitting down. Like, I'm kind of fanning out right now a little bit because I came up as a DJ in the 90s, and you really mean a lot. I am sitting down with Renee Newville of the legendary Zane. How are you doing? Hi, Ricochet. I'm doing wonderfully. So nice to meet you, and I'm so happy to know that you came up in the 90s as a DJ. Yeah. Because I have to tell you, personally, um, growing up in Brooklyn right. in the 80s and 70s and the 80s, you know, when hip hop was born right. in the Bronx, um, the lifestyle, especially in my neighborhood in the summertime, was all about the block parties, right. double dutch, warmth, being outside, and having community. Yes. Right? Yes. So music was active in our lives. It wasn't um, an industry that we in the inner cities look towards as a career. It was just a part of the tapestry of life, right? They a life. lifestyle. Right? Yeah. So I remember in, um, it was it was probably like 1990, 91, uh, KG from Naughty by Nature giving me a tape of like just beats. Right. Loop tapes. You know, right. back then that's how, you know, writers wrote. And it was a new experience at the time for me just to write to a track. But I remember when I heard this what Michael Wyckoff track, Loot, I said, wow, this reminds me of the very normal day in July. Somewhere in my teens, somewhere around 11.30 a.m. to like 1.30 p.m. when I'm about to go outside. Do, 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 do. You would just hear this music coming out of the cars that are, you know, zooming past you right. on the streets. So you're dodging while you're on the streets playing. It was a part of your lifestyle. Right. Right. And so I said, I remember being very intentional in that moment. I sat down on, on the ground like, in my like dorm room, locked my door. And I said, you know what? I want to recreate that classic moment because I miss it. Right. I was still very young. I was in my 20s, but 10 years when you're 20 is a long time. So you're of like, course. It's the old days. Of course. 100%. Let me see. Let me see if I can, you know, encapsulate that feel. So everybody moved your body. Just just, just felt like how Ramp would rock on a, on a track or, you know, um, the Point of Sisters. It was just, you know, let me try to, you know, create a melody that would um, connect Right. Melody that connect with everyone. You know, back then, melody was important. 100%. And that song ended up being? Charting very high. Um, end up number being six. A classic. I believe it debuted number six on the Billboard 100 charts, which is yes. like, which is an astonishing thinking what that time was. Hip hop and, and R&B was not in the forefront of the mainstream. So for you to come through, and, and in case everybody's wondering what record we're talking about, I'm assuming we're talking about Hey Mr. DJ, Oh, correct? we are talking about Hey right. Mr. DJ. Because we're talking about Hey Mr. In. DJ, which was the record that I was, and the rest of the world, I assume, was introduced to you guys with. Um, and, and you felt that. Uh, the way you set that up was exactly how it felt. Coming, I, I lived in a building, so come downstairs in the building. Right. The, um, the, the, the moms and pops and the old heads are slapping bones, slapping dominoes on, on the outside. There, outside. The <laughs> dread them and the Rasta them are doing their thing in one corner. Kids are playing on that side. And it was just, it, it just felt like whatever hip hop was, that's what it felt like for me. And you sharing that experience is very much just, just, cements that. Well, Ricochet, you have to understand, especially as um, as a Black people, this is Black History Month, right? right? Our culture, every generation, every decade, every generation has a sound that is their own. That is just the natural like progression of time and life and culture and history and legacy, right? So for you even to say hip hop, and you're speaking to me makes but, sense because as a people as a culture we didn't um we weren't separate no we went to school with the same guys that were rapping right with the same girls that were in gospel choir right with the same girls that played um basketball with the same girls that were on the booster team in brooklyn we were all in the same class with, with the same congressmen this is shout out to Hakeem, Hakeem was in my homeroom. Hakeem, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries was in okay. my homeroom in, in Midwood High School. We all lived the same experience, right? 
Right. So hip hop really is more than a genre. Yeah, no, it I don't. When I mention hip hop, I do not mention, and it maybe it's it's weird to some people. I do not speak on hip hop as a music genre because right. that's not really what it is to me. Um, right. You know, it like you said, it is a lifestyle. It is a culture to me. It's it's yeah. what shaped who I am today. So right. you know, rap I consider the music. Yeah. Hip hop is is the and, and I think when a lot of people call Mary J. Blige the queen of hip hop and R and B and a lot of younger kids are well, she doesn't make hip hop music. Well, I guess you had to be there. Well, you know what? She was very much what hip hop represented. And so when I when I say that, and I'm, I'm just giving you a, a, a shout out and congratulate you for even just being one of the stewards of music as a DJ. Thank the you. DJ was extremely important because the party was all about the DJ. Back then, yes. it wasn't about who's performer, it's about the DJ. The yes. DJ was there first. He, he checked in the venue first, or he checked at the block party first, and he was the last one to go, the first one to get there and the last one to go. He encompassed everything, or she encompassed everything, right? And so- And you had to carry them big ass week. crates for blocks and blocks and blocks. <laughs> exactly. if, you were, if you were a teenager and didn't have a car. And not only the crate, but they're curating your experience for the day. They're responsible for your joy. So, hey, Mrs. DJ, you can get it started. So as you Everybody say that, that's, that is obviously the, the inspiration behind Hey, Mr. DJ. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, here we are. It's Black History Month, right? We're celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Um, thank God. But hip hop, of course, is dance hall hip hop. It's rock, it's reggae, it's soca, it's jazz, all of those things. And so coming to Brampton for me, is sort of a tradition in, in, in the sense that every year, whether it be Rotterdam in the Netherlands, whether it be New Orleans with the New, New, um, New Orleans Jazz Orchestra, who I performed with last year this time, with the same type of sentiment, mm -hmm. or whether it be Branton, Toronto, which has become like one of my favorite places because of the people. Shout out to Cardi and, and Glenn and, and Glenn Lewis and Russell Peters. But this is a part of my dedication and my commitment to my culture. Right. You know, um, anything cultural is for me. Right. You know, I come from Jamaicans. We, we had culture as the center of our lives, you know. And so that's how, that's how all this um, plays out. And for me, it's, it's an honor to even be able to been in this business for 30 years. Uh, that makes both of us actually crazy, crazy. Yeah, this year made 30 it's years. A blessing. Yeah. It's, it's a blessing and it's an honor, but to right. be able to share the stage with the future with a brand new artist that are coming up. Let me stop you there for a second. Let me ask you about chill, that because chill. I am still out here. I am still um, still doing what I was doing to some aspect 20 years ago. I'm still in the clubs. I'm still there on Friday nights and Saturday nights. And a lot of my contemporaries that I came up with ask me one question. They, how do you do it? And I'm like, well, what do you mean how do I do it? Get dressed? Or, you know, they're like, no, how do you rock with that music? This is not hip hop. We're not living through what this music is, is not hip hop. And that really upsets me at times because it sounds like, you know, in the 90s, some of the older heads would tell me, nah, Mob Deep and this and that, this is this is not what hip hop is supposed to be. It's encompassing too much violence. It's supposed to be this, it's supposed to be that. A lot of people are always saying what hip hop is supposed to be and kind of ignoring the evolution of what it is. So how do you feel about that? As you say, you're here with the future, the newer artists. Oh my gosh. Talk to me if about that. If you're not moving forward, you're stagnant. If you're not open, to the future, you die quick. Mm. And I mean that figuratively. Yeah, yeah. I mean that you have this one life and we have generations of people that are in our family, our family line that lived full lives way before our parents even met each other. Who are we to believe that this is it? Right. Who are we to believe that the music, the sound, the look, the feel, life is what we know it to be. Right. And that's it. So in right. humility and in reverence and in gratitude, I open, I'm open to connecting with the future. Because once we connect their hand on my hand, it's like the wave. 
Right. They're sending everything that I carry on to the future. And right. so they excite me because I remember there was a time when Sugar Hill Gang came on and a lot of me and my friends had to sneak downstairs or sneak in the room and close the door back to listen to this hibbity hop. Right. Right? Because it was like a curse. Right, right, right. Our parents did not quite understand why are we not sounding like what they knew. But I felt it. I felt what they loved. I think it's important to allow the generation of today to love what they want to yes. love. Yes, please let's speak a little louder for people in the back. Let's not browbeat them, right? right? Let's accept them for who they are right? so that they can be open to what preceded them and to also give them an example as to how they should be ushering the new generation when they come to that point in time in their lives. It's just like raising kids. Very you know? well said. So you got to also think about, let's talk about jazz for a little bit, right? If we were living in like the, the 20s and we were listening to this jazz music, do you think that our parents who were, who might have been holier than, holier than thou Protestant, do you think that they really would have been open to that music? Oh, yeah. That no, was jazz was definitely music, chastised right? for what it was, right? Yeah. For its content. Those and, same yeah. jazz musicians and jazz lovers and listeners, they matured too. And some of them got with the hip hop. And some of them were like, what is this new hippity hop? Right. It's just, this is just the way um, life and humans interact when faced with change sometimes, you know? Right. Sometimes um, the unknown can become um, a fearful force. And you know what fear does, it projects more fear. Right. But that's not real. If right. you, if you if you encounter it openly and trust that whatever that is going to bring you is it, got your back, then you'll be okay. Now, another thing though, I would like to say after all of that is that I do recognize, however, that there are some not so positive messages and messaging 100%. 100%. that's coming through this music, right. which is clearly a reflection of the world that we're living in. Exactly. So instead of um, attacking the simple just evolution, let's really dig deep and pay attention to what's really happening to our hearts, our souls, our identity. That's what I think outside of music. Right. That, um, well, there's something that permeates, leads to that music. Because that permeates all life. Right. That's what we need to get a hold on. That's right. that's something that I I see and am very sensitive to. But not all of the new music is bad and not all of the young kids and young adults, and the yeah, young creators are gone. But I think that um, it's really important for every chance each and up each of each of us yet, I'm sorry, to sort of take hold of our our young ones. Yeah, I could see I could see that coming though. I like you I think I mean you know and if you've seen it yourself, um every decade or so or maybe even less than that a shift occurs in in music. And this next shift we'll we'll see where that leads to, but hopefully it injects a lot more love into the culture. Yeah. That's deserving. Um Okay, so let's talk about the show, the Flavors and Vibes show on the 23rd at the Rose Brampton. You got a lot of hits. Um, I mean, two stand out to me right now, two of your favorite records, Groove Theory and, uh, sorry, Groove Thing and and Hey Mr. DJ. So Okay, so let me ask you this, Ricochet. I named if a mixtape after Groove, after Groove Thing, by the way. I mean, like Pardon? Groove Thing inspired a mixtape series. Like we did, oh. I did a whole mixtape series inspired by Groove Thing. What? Um, so just uh, just a little shout out to you. But talk oh to me gosh, about it was a very you. dope project. But talk to me about what the show is all about, what we could expect. Um, if I'm sitting front row, what am I in for? Well, in terms of my performance of the whole night, I think that the whole night is really going to be sort of a kaleidoscope, like a potpourri of um, black black creatives, black 
excellence, black expression. Um, it's going to be a night where a lot of bridges will be connected. Right. And um, and it's all about the diaspora. So you're gonna you're gonna feel Africa in the room. Right. Okay. You're gonna feel intention and soul in that room. You're gonna hear a lot of familiar um, music from your life with a little twist to fit the genres of the room. Right. Um, so all the classics, you're definitely gonna hear all the classics. All the classics will be definitely be front and center, but there'll be some um I like mashups. Okay. So there'll be some mashups there. Are we um, getting a little bit of Sister Nancy behind something? Like <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say, I wish what else is on the horizon for the rest of the year and maybe beyond that for you. Anything else that you're getting into that we should be excited definitely. about? Definitely. I just wrapped up um the Boston film. I starred in my first a short film that was filmed right there in Toronto. So I definitely have been bitten by the bug. Right. So look for some more work from me on screen. I also did another um, film in December that's coming out this year. Um, in terms of films, I also have licensed some of my original music to the brand new Transformer movie that oh, comes amazing. out in June. I think it's June 9th, 2023. Um, so I'm continuing the legacy in that way. Also, um, I've worked on one of Issa Rae's up and coming projects. Um, some of my music is also been placed in her, her, um, her new project. I can't really say much more right, about right, that. Right, right. Amazing to hear um, nonetheless. Sister Nancy, she's, um, one of my favorite, um, female leaders in the music you know, and I have been honored to um, partake in her documentary that will be out this year. Nice. Um, it's a pretty big deal uh, to me <clears throat> because um, she was someone who inspired me. Right. Definitely have been honored to more recently um, contributed to Childish Bandit Gambino's new release. Um, Chloe and Hallie have just redone Sending My Love about two wow. years ago during the pandemic. So that is another way that at least I know that the new generation is hearing, you know, the sound from a time when of it was course. a lot simpler. Um, as a writer and a publisher, um, for me, it's a big honor, you know, because what, we're not going to be here forever. You're not no. going to be here forever. Right. And so to know that, um, this music is, is in good hands is um, is really a blessing um you know before we get out of here you mentioned 50 years of hip-hop earlier and uh we recently got the sad news uh you know true goy of de la soul one of the you know pioneers one of the legends a very influential group in itself and individually as as artists that group uh we lost him um, talk to me about that and how does that how does that feel for you because I know there was some connection there there's, there's been a lot of a connection there as a matter of fact Mass Appeal did a documentary and um, De La Soul asked me to be a part of it it's it's online you can find it um, I'm sure it'll be surfaced now that he's gone um, I never called him True Boy Dave he was always Dave right um Pass, you know, and Maceo. These are people that I was still growing and knowing. Right. They didn't raise me because we're we're peers in that sense in terms of age. Right. But we knew each other when we were coming up in this music. Um, Sticks is high. I was there in the studio when that was recorded and mixed because back then the music industry was you had friends and um, our lives weren't all about business. It's really about supporting each other. And then you become family. So anytime they were in town, I was with them. Right. You know, if, if, if possibly did a crash, he knew he could stay. Um, and it was always on the up and up, like true brother, sister to this day. So I've seen Dave and I'm just, um, 
I'm sad to see that he's he's gone, but I also knew how much he was suffering. Right. So he's, you know, his uh, his difficulties his health. Right. 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 Um. So. You know what more can we say about that? I mean, I guess we're lucky enough to have the music live on and uh, his memory live on through the music. Renee, I will let you go where, cause conversation with you has uh, reminded me of why I'm still doing this. Cause I'm sure, I don't know about you, but as you know, 30 years goes on, there's times where you wonder and you see things changing around. You're like, ah, oh, do I still do this? Do I not? But uh, I guess when it's, when it's part of your life, it can never not become part of your life. And speaking to you is just like I said, reminded me a little bit about that. So appreciate that. I'm so glad, Ricochet. One thing I have to say is that if you take care of the music, the music will take care of you. And I toured with Roy Hargrove for 15 years. Rest in peace, Roy, um, with the RH Factor. And this is something that he lived by. And this is something that he told me and many others. And I'm, impart I'm imparting that information to you. Whenever you feel doubtful, just know that you have a role and a place in this thing. Right. You're carrying it to the people. You're carrying the news to the people. I appreciate those about, words and that and that that statement will stick with me.